Good afternoon. Hey, Allison, how are you? <laughs> well, thanks. How are you? Awesome today. <laughs> always awesome, Ben Volmer. Always awesome. So we're going to have a great conversation, I think. We're going to talk about developing a, a career plan, kind of talk about how we do that. Um, so you want to go ahead and tell us who our sponsors are today for Scottish Summit 2021? I do indeed. So uh, a massive thank you to all of these wonderful, wonderful companies who are the main sponsors for Scottish Summit 2021. Uh, without their support, we can't keep doing these wonderful community events. Um, and uh, the, their support is very, very much appreciated. So uh, if you get the opportunity, make sure that you can reach out to, to one or all of those companies and uh, try and give them some business. I think that's fair. Very fair. So a little intro about me. Uh, my name is Alison Mulligan. I am the CEO of Maximus IT and a business applications MVP, and also a dedicated recruiter for Dynamics and the Power Platform. And uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter or on LinkedIn under a Mulligan365. You'll find me on any platform uh, that you choose to look. <laughs> Over to you, Ben. Uh, and uh, I'm Ben Vollmer. Uh, I am the Senior Vice President of Product Management here at a company called IFS. Um, and I was at Microsoft for uh, about 16 years. So, so you might know me from that, that role. Now, this is my, my, my official picture. I will just tell you that um, I'm also, and how you know me, you might, not, might, might know me as Beast from, uh, from X-Men. Um, I love my, the blue theme. It yes, also blue hairs, yeah. I, actually, this was my boss actually described me as Beast from X-Men one time in a, in a customer meeting. We're going to talk a little bit about, uh, about jobs. And what I want to kind of start off with is if you're in technology, your job is going to change and what you do in that job is going to change. Um, I think my, my favorite thing is, you know, you've probably seen this five job thing on Twitter uh, the past couple of days, Allison. Yeah. The five tags, five jobs, which, yes. uh, yeah, it was pretty entertaining. It, it is pretty entertaining. Uh, you know, I remember when I first started doing computers, I mean, I, I learned on a, on a, uh, on a Franklin Ace a Franklin Apple two C clone, um, learn basic on that thing. So that skill today has zero relevance. And so really you got to think about where you're going in technology. Cause if you stand still, you can quickly not age out as far as age of you goes, but ages out as far as your skills go and you can become a, you know, you become a commodity. We'll talk about that a little more here during the process. Anybody you've seen, by the way, have you run across any punch card operators? I um, haven't, but I, I was having a conversation with someone the other day um, along the lines of when I first started work, we used to transmit our orders over to the Singapore office on a telex machine. And when the fax first came in, <laughs> we were beside ourselves with the technological advance Ooh. of having a fax machine. And when I first started in recruitment, I've been doing this for nearly 25 years now, we didn't have a CRM system. We had paper CVs that people would mail to us. Uh, and we would put a cover sheet on them and they were stored in these uh, file-proof cabinets. Um, and, and so you just had to remember people, right? So, uh, you know, it's so much easier today than it was then, but yeah. And the technology has come such a long way for like anybody on who's listening to this session, even if you're new into the world of working, um, still in your lifetime you've seen technology come a really long way even if it's just the power that you have in your in your pocket on a cell phone right yep I, 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 telex i mean I, yes <laughs> well but, but, anyway, but imagine if though your job was was a was 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 being a telex operator it, it, that actually was a job yeah that, and you, I, because actually it required some specialists and these telex things would cut off and the guy there was a hilarious story of um uh, my mum used to send orders via telex machine at the job that she did. And her boss's name was Mr. Coburn, which for the American viewers is spelled C-O-C-K-B-U-R-N. And it did once cut off at just at the first part of that name. <laughs> and she was panicking whether or not uh, it would be taken badly. Uh, 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 it probably rings up with, with telegram machines where you had, to, you, had to, you had to you know drop all the all the vowels um yes when you're thinking about your career though i think because this whole this whole session is on career by the way i think that the thing, first thing you gotta figure out is i see two very different paths that for people follow with careers and maybe you do too 
but I see one that's a very established path and I see one that's kind of a choose your own adventure path. Right. Um, and so let's talk about the, so the defined path, you know, I would say you start off an associate consultant, you go to a consultant, you go to a senior consultant, you go to a solution architect, you go to a practice manager, you know, it's kind of a defined path. You, you can, and, and there might be like a few branches in that path, but it's still very much a very clear line of progression, right? But like, you're a good example. You haven't done that, right? You've done a, a choose your own and adventure type thing, as have I, yeah. you know, uh, I've gone in uh, all kinds of directions. Yeah. But neither one of those is wrong. Neither one of those is bad. Neither one of those is a, is a downfall, but there are two very different ways of, of doing it. Now, I think you and I are going to find out that the path of how you map your career and how you map your job doesn't matter which one of those paths, but you just, you do have to start off realizing though, that these are two very, you know, again, here's an established path in the, in, in the snow, everybody goes down it and they might branch off or there's this, which, you know, my, my role went from consulting to pre-sales to sales, to sales strategy, to product management. That's not right. a, there's no path you can go down that's an established path for you to follow that, that, that type of progression. Yeah. None of those moves from one role to the next are necessarily obvious moves. Right. But there's, there's an overarching theme here. Um, and that is that, you know, to, if you want to get somewhere in your career, if there is a specific goal in mind, if there's a particular position that you want to get to, you need to strategize. You can't just get in the car and fill it up and do the blues brothers of, you know, it's uh, however far to Chicago, it's dark and we're wearing sunglasses, right? You know, it's, you need to have some idea where you're going, but like, if you don't, and you don't have a goal in mind and actually you're, you're uh, the way that you want to move forward is just, you know, whichever next move is the one that's most exciting to you, that's fine too. You know, there's no requirement for you to say right now, I want to be the CEO of a software company, right? Like you, that, you don't have to do that. You but, don't, but one of my, <laughs> one of my early in career mentors here at, micro, at Microsoft, you know, you know, we just joined Microsoft, two, two or three had just joined Microsoft and she'd been there for 20 years when I joined and she's actually still at Microsoft. So we actually went up to her and said, hey, how do, how do you live 20 years here? I mean, this is, this is brutal. How do you do this? Yeah. And you know her response was? It's like a marathon. She goes, in a marathon, you don't No, I'm fat. I've never run a marathon. But, but, Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if, you, if you look at marathon runners, they don't run the entire time. Yeah. They run for a little while. They walk for a little while. They jog for a little while. She was, you got to figure out when you're going to run, when you're going to walk, when you're going to jog. She was, all that matters is you cross the finish line. Right. Yeah. So. It's, and, and, and none of it is, you know, it's none of it's life or death. You don't have to, it's not terminal if you make a, a wrong turn or anything like that. No, it's not. But, but planning the journey, I think though, for me is, was way more important than, I don't like being bobbed around. You, 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 you can make a choice yourself or somebody can make a choice for you. Yeah, correct. Um, you're, but, you're either working on your own dreams or you're, or you're working on someone else's, right? When somebody goes, I'm living the dream, I'm like, whose dream are you living? Yours or somebody yeah. else's? <laughs> yeah, yours, <laughs> yours or your boss's. Right? Exactly. Yeah. But as part of that, though, you got to do, you got to kind of sit down and say, what are my gaps? You, you yeah. know, self-reflection in the technology field is critical. It's, it's what are my gaps? And what are my gaps technically? Which I think as IT people, we sometimes get focused on and hung up on. I will tell you, technical gaps are easier to, to solve than non-technical gaps. Yep. You cannot teach emotional intelligence to somebody. Um, you cannot teach empathy to somebody generally, right? Right. The, these are really crucial points. This is something that I talk to my, my uh, clients a lot when they're hiring, which is actually it's more important to get the right person in terms of their mindset and their attitude towards how they're going to approach the role for you. Because you can, you must assume that you can teach them anything they technically need to know. And Ben, I'm willing to bet that you yourself didn't know everything that you needed to know at 9 a.m. on day one of the job that, that you just started or, or when you started at Microsoft or when you got promoted into a role at Microsoft. You have to learn on the job, right? You can be, you can be really skilled and experienced, but you still are going to learn things. Uh, when you go into a role but like knowing it's the same as approaching it from a project perspective you've got an as is and a to be mm -hmm. right and knowing those two points will help you know what what you need to pick up and learn and grow on on the way right
but you need to do as, as a, as if you're job hunting or no, you're job hunting, if you're in your career today, this, you've got to do it today. You got to sit down and say, what do I need to be more? Do I need to be more transparent? Do I need more political? We'll talk about how you get these skills later, but then you have to start mapping those. What, what skills do I miss? Do I not have, do I want to be at? And then I need to highlight those gaps. And then I want to, I want to highlight how do I get something to cover those gaps in the, in, in the future? Right. And if you're not sure what you what you need to work on, get an opinion of somebody you mm-hmm. trust as well. You know, we I've done several of these uh, leadership 360s where they actually survey your you know your coworkers and tell you what you're good at and what you're not good at. You know, those are really good really good tools to, to use as well. If you're going to be successful though in a career, you, you got to figure out what you what you are at your core. I, I get so many people who are so hung up on. I identify with this product. I am this product consultant. And, and does it really matter? I mean, I look back at my career. I've done probably 20 different products in my career. But because the, the truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, you got to translate requirements. You got to explain things to people. You got to become a coach. You got to become a trusted advisor. You might be a product expert or salesperson. But above all, what that really means is at your core, you have to maintain a growth mindset. Right. What you, what you can't do, though, is, is, is hang on to the past. I mean, I think hanging on the past is, the, you know, well, when I was a kid, we did this, you know, again, I, I, I took my, my, my last job at Microsoft. Um, Christine's Zamuda pulled me inside and said, okay, Ben, knock that shit off. Yes, ma'am. Because it was, well, we tried that back, you know, I, I was making reference to, to historically what we've done. And she's like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, so you have to not hang on the past. You also can't be afraid of change. Yep. Um, it, you know, um, we we'll it says here, but that really means a fixed mindset. And, and really the, the, the idea is, 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 is change is the only constant in life. I don't know how you feel that, but, but that's definitely... A, yeah, a big like, deal for us. The, the reality is like um, you, you can't stay the same. Mm-hmm. Your, your body changes every minute. Uh, it, you know, your, your body and your mindset changes every minute. And I read a statistic recently that said um, the majority of people don't really come into themselves and become successful uh, until they're in their 40s or 50s because they have some life experience, the emotional maturity to be able to drive themselves forward. Mm-hmm. Plus they have some idea about which direction they can drive themselves in. So, you know, if you're someone watching this and you're thinking I'm in my forties, I really don't know what I'm doing. That's cool. Do you know what? 75% of people have been in the same, have been in the same position. And some of the world's most successful people didn't become successful until they were in their forties or fifties or sixties, if you're Colonel Sanders, right? So, you know, you, you, you and I have the same point, but I think what stops you though, is your mindset has to be changed. And, and I think um, we've got kind of three, three famous people up here. I added a fourth famous person at the end, by the way. Um, is it but, you know, you know, the saying is, you know, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react. If you look at, I mean, like things are going to change. Life is going to move around. Uh, the company you're going to work for, I, I, I mean, I, I've worked for him. He's gone bankrupt while I worked for him. Or right at, I, mean, I, I, would, I literally hit the door and they went bankrupt. I mean, th- there's, there's definitely change. We're going to acquire somebody. We're going to merge people. Your job's going to go to somebody. Like it's a constant game of things moving around. Yeah. Um, the only thing we can be sure of is we can be sure of nothing, right? Exactly. Yeah. I think, you know, Dawn Strobel, by the way, she's a CEO of a company called Go By Truck which is an American company out of Texas. Um, she has some really good things on workplace culture, by the way. So if you ever get bored one day, her, her stuff on workplace culture is really good. But it's really around, you have to start dedicating yourself to a purpose and not letting him get in the way of that purpose because you got to make a positive change to influence it. I, I will say the last person here, um, if you haven't read the book, The World is Flat, which by the way, is a you know huge tome. Thomas Friedman is... It's phenomenal. That book is an amazing, that book literally changed my career trajectory. So I, I love I, that book. I haven't read it. I haven't read it. It's you know, never been recommended to me either. So like, this is, this is new. Get the abridged audio version. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do the what full you book. Just tell me. You just tell me what's in it. That's <laughs> but, but he says something interesting, which is optimists are almost always wrong. They're usually wrong. Mm-hmm. But if you look at all the changes happen in the world, it's always done by optimists. So yeah. yes, they're wrong. 
but it happens. I, I think my favorite quote though is from a from a lady I've known for a couple of years. Um, she'll be famous one day, and it's you can make more money, but you can't make more time. And that was uh, by uh, Alison Mulligan. Have you heard of her I before? I've no idea who she is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also I stole that quote from someone else. <laughs> don't, don't, don't the truth get way of a good story, Allison. Um, so we're going to go through change. So how do we now present ourselves? So with that, I'm going to point over to you, Allison, and, and you're going to talk a little about presenting yourself. Yeah, sure. So like, um, you need to be aware that um, people that don't know you particularly, uh, which is pretty much most people, unless they happen to be close friends, um, they they have a perception of you from what you put out into the world. Uh, the majority of which at this point is online uh, and uh, you have the option to present yourself as as the prolo as the pro polished professional lindsay lohan who uh, looks like she can uh, act up a storm or you can go for the hot mess lohan uh, which is probably your facebook profile right now so uh... <laughs> people still have facebook yeah old people do okay i'll do okay okay, okay boomer <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah, I'm not that far off, actually. I feel a bit boomerish sometimes, but uh, except for the fact that I'm very down with social media. So, you know, there's that. On the LinkedIn side of things, um, LinkedIn is like uh, is really becoming the place for a lot of people to connect uh, career-wise, right? I, it's, uh, I still don't think it's had its day, and there's some new stuff coming up on LinkedIn I think is going to make it really special. Um, it, they're starting to include stories now, which I think is great. Uh, in terms of driving driving people and more content towards the site. Um, but realistically, it's still a site where you can get found and noticed and recognized, right? Some of the things that you need to do on LinkedIn to make your, uh, your profile stand out, particularly if you want uh, people to promote you or if you want people to hire you, is to include a strap line. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they seem to think that they have to be everything to everyone and you don't. You can just be specialist, be niche in one thing, and you will achieve more uh, keeping in that one direction. Mm -hmm. Put put your achievements on there as well. We talked about, in fact, we're talking about this later, the walking deck mm -hmm. thing. Is that right? So yep. it, I, I call it achievements, but, you know, like a, a, a summary about, you know, who you are and what you're going to do for somebody certifications of becoming super relevant like in fairness most companies don't ask for them when they're hiring people but like it is really good to put that stuff on there um you know there's there's never any reason why you wouldn't put it on there it, you know it looks like you're dedicated and professional recommendations like do you know what people are so i don't know how you feel about this ben but i hear a lot of people when i say get some recommendations on your LinkedIn profile and they're like, oh, I don't like people. I don't like to ask people for it. You know, they don't want to do it. Like, do you know what? I don't mind if somebody asks me for a recommendation. I don't know what, what your thoughts are. I'm always happy to do it. So, so, so here's my, here's my trick, by the way, pro tip from BV is um, if you don't want to ask somebody, don't ask anybody. Uh, give people recommendations yourself. What I right. found is if I write, rec and I, I try this, by the way, is I wrote recommendations every month. I wrote two recommendations just to see what happened. And half the people I wrote recommendations for rec wrote a recommendation back to me. So, so if you don't want to ask, hey, Allison, I don't want to ask for a recommendation because, you, you know, you're, you're, I'm a shy person. I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Write one. Um, <laughs> Right, like it's it's always best to, to give first, yeah. and then you know uh, people will volunteer back. Right, another another pro tip uh, from from AM is uh, <laughs> that you can actually write the recommendation yourself. Like you can go, like I would if I was getting Ben to do it, I would say, how many recruiters have you dealt with? Uh, in, in the um, Microsoft space, how many of those do you think were actually any good? You know, what kind of positions do you recruit for? And then, you know, what would you say I did differently to anybody else, right? Um, and is there anything else you want to add? Then you just type it up into two paragraphs. Hi, I'm Ben. I've been recruiting Microsoft professionals for 16 years uh, into these types of positions. Alison is the best at making people feel comfortable because she has blue hair. Uh, and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend her if you're looking to hire, right? Put it all over to Ben and say, would you mind pasting this into a recommendation? And like the work is done. Or so. there, one of my friends found a site, uh, you can go Google or Bing it if you want to, called LinkedIn Recommendation Writer. You literally Ooh. type in, you type in Allison's name and, hit, and it generates three random sentences. <laughs> I'm not saying those random <laughs> sentences aren't horrible, but if, if you don't feel comfortable writing something, that's a good start. Just do that, take, yeah. Take those three sentences, expand them out a little bit, tweak them, 
just write the recommendations. Just do something. Just do something. Just do something. Yes. Just do something. Right. Just ask the question. I, I, I wanna I wanna put you on your do side here. You have post, by the way. I just, I wanna call this out real quick. Um, on okay. the post side. There's two different types. Of, there's posts that are actually heartfelt posts from you that are actual posts. You know, you do one every Monday called Motivational Mondays. Yeah. Um, there are two companies I've seen in, in the in the business app space that I, honestly, um, I unfollow almost every employee of that company because they literally just basically turn their LinkedIn feed in over to the company. Right. And all their LinkedIn feed is is just just company. Don't worry. There's some injury, but like the same thing 4,000 times from 4,000 different people or 8,000 or 10,000 that doesn't make a whole, so, so just make sure the posts you put on LinkedIn are reflective of you. And if you have a company gives them to you, take those posts they give you and put your personal spin on them. Right. Yeah. Like that's something I always try and do. Uh, and that's an excellent point. If you're literally just, if your posts are just you reposting stuff that the marketing team from your company have, have put out, then not so much, unless it's something that's really going to help people like you're giving away free exam vouchers or something, then great, post that up. But, you know, if it's just like, oh, look, you know, we've surpassed our target for Q4 or something, like, honestly, nobody really, like, it's nice and everything, And but the company can post that stuff. This is your personal site. You're not going to be with that company forever. Well, maybe you are with that company forever, but, like, this is your personal profile. Mm -hmm. Make the posts personal about you. Um, you know, if it's about the Q4 smashing the q4 target then do a like you know i'm so happy i was part of a team that we did this and you know and i felt like i was able to contribute doing this or like because people in community helped me to do this we smashed our target thank you everybody right you know like ben says absolutely make it personal and put links to sites in if you've got a blog site or you've got a github or something that is going to show people the quality of what you do put links to it in there like why, why would you not do that right uh, anything else I haven't included in the do's? Uh, I think, no, I think, I think that, that that's, that's it for, 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 for the do's. Um, and for the don'ts, this drives me insane, right? Anybody that's got a picture that is like them at someone's wedding and they've cut themselves <laughs> off down the face because it's like a group shot or pictures of their dog. Like I love my dogs, but like it's a professional networking site, right? Well, it's, uh, hang on, I'm going to just show people. This was my second LinkedIn photo. See, Not I like that. Awful at every level. <laughs> I like it. Well, I like it because I know you. But would I hire you on the strength of that? Probably not. Yeah, but 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 it, it doesn't really show me. You don't see who I. I mean, this is me at, a, at the Science Center in 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 in, uh, in Seattle. It's not really a. I mean, it's not really a good. My, my photo before that, by the way, just you know, was Bill Gates mugshot. <laughs> <laughs> I go. I beg you to change it back to that. Uh, no, no. I, 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 <laughs> he looks so young in it as well, doesn't he? Yeah. It's hilarious. Anyway, uh, but, yeah. but yeah, like it's a professional networking site. Yeah. Have a professional-ish shot. You know, if yeah. you don't have to have a professional headshot taken, but like make it a head and shoulders picture of you where people can see your face. It's a deliberate picture of you. But, but, but it's also important. To, to make sure, uh, for me at least, LinkedIn is not my CV online. Right. My CV and LinkedIn are two very different things. And, and so don't put, you know, I, I read LinkedIn profiles. I'm like, I don't care about your 90% billable utilization rate. Like how, that doesn't benefit this. LinkedIn is not just for job hunting. It's for building a network. It's part of your personal brand, right? Yes. Like it's totally part of your personal brand and you should build a personal brand, right? Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, it's not intended to be your CV. You don't have to go into huge amounts of detail. Don't put fun, like, you know, I think I'm funny, but like I may be the only person that thinks that. So I do tend to shy away from putting anything comedic. However hilarious I think it is uh, on my LinkedIn profile, it just it, like it doesn't come across well for people that don't know you. Uh, yeah, I, I will tell you that you know one of my, my most popular posts I ever made on LinkedIn, by the way, which was which was a uh, it was a what I said in an email versus what I actually meant in an email. Oh, for posts it's totally fine. But 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 not in my actual content. Right. You put that. It, it's yeah. a post, not a content. It's a post. Like it's fine for posts. I put all kinds of weird stuff in in posts that I put out. 
um, or pieces that I write, but like not not in your like main profile page, right? It's, it doesn't belong there. And again, don't give mixed messages. Make it super clear. This is who I am. This is what I do. Like if you if you do something and you want to do something different, then make it clear. I do this now, and I want to do this, right? That's fine. But like, don't try and be all things to all men. It's like it's. Barb Diamanco, I went through a class with her a number of years ago. She was a very early social selling thing. And she forced me to go to write a Word document, basically a press release on who Ben Vollmer was. Okay. And then take that press release and put it into LinkedIn. So my LinkedIn profile is actually basically based off of Barb's work. And it was a, it was a, here's the story of Ben Vollmer. And that story has to permeate the entire profile, not just the pieces I want it to permeate. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's a good profile, right? I've had a look at your profile. It looks nice. It, it, it tells the story of Ben, right? Yep. That's it. You're, you're telling the story of who you are. Don't link to the wrong company. Oh my God. Like, it, how can you not know who you work for? Like, seriously, <laughs> the amount of people that are on LinkedIn saying they work for Maximus and I have no clue who they are, literally. There, but there is like, there's a, a Maximus IT in the US somewhere that are actually an IT company. They're not particularly a Microsoft partner, but they are an IT company. Um, and none of those people work for us, but like they've linked us on their profile. So I, I would put up next to that, check your job title for spelling. Yes. I mean, just just like seriously, put it, write it in Word, do a spell check on it and paste it. Don't, don't the amount of times I've seen chief spelled wrong is funny. Or at Microsoft, there's a level called principal. Okay, yeah. it's principal as in PAL. Yeah, but not principal as in a principal. school principal. The amount of times that school principal gets put in the like, if you do a school principal title and search for Microsoft, you're going to find probably thousands of people have the wrong title in there. So just check that as well. Just, yeah, just Google it. Seriously, just Google it if you're not sure. Like, oh, uh, spelling, no, spelling's uh, like an issue for a lot of people. And, you know, we've people who are younger than us, Ben, have grown up always having spell checker. <laughs> Uh, tools available to them so you know so a lot of people haven't like i had to learn how to spell because i had no option right um but like you know if you didn't if you weren't forced into that because you've always had spell checking tools available to you then like you know just double check anything like that just you you can do a grammar check on word and like it, it generally actually turns out pretty well so you know just yes. even do that and don't leave gaps like um i know it's not meant to be your cv but yeah. like you know, if there is some time out that you took to go traveling or you just didn't get a job or something like just even if you put just something in there like looking after a family member just put something in so that there isn't a giant gap uh, yeah. in your employment but it's not a huge deal cv uh one of my greatest uh love affairs and one of my biggest hatreds is uh, is the cv <laughs> and if i could do away with cvs i would absolutely do it so um, the, the QR code on the screen, incidentally, is for, um, uh, to, for you to download a white paper on how to write a good CV. Um, and uh, it's quite a dated picture on there, so don't laugh at me because I don't have blue hair in it. So but we'll gloss over that. Um, again, with the CV, I, pr I promise you, as someone that has more than 20 years recruitment experience recruiting for technical people, if you put a strap line on your CV that says, Ben Volmer, solution architect, for example, if that's what you are or the job that you want, mm -hmm. like eight times out of 10, you will get hired just because of that. And I'll tell you the reasons why eight times out of 10, most people don't really read your CV. They kind of gloss over it and look, is there any company names I recognize? Is there a couple of words that jump out at me? And otherwise, if you make it as simple as possible for someone to see what you do, they'll, they'll get you in for a conversation just based on that. And, and the achievements is another one. Like I, I've put in under don'ts that generic about me paragraph because I can't, I've read hundreds of thousands of CVs in my career, possibly millions. I've no idea. We're, we're doing tests. We don't know how many yeah. it is, but it's a lot. And I cannot read another paragraph that starts with, I am an excellent communicator with. Uh, I, or I am a proactive person with excellent written and verbal communicate because oh, nobody know. cares. No, and it's not true. You just, I don't know why people still do it. It's not even relevant. Like it's much more relevant to put some achievements. The way I recommend putting achievements is have two columns 
on the left hand side have this is what I did and on the right hand side this is the outcome for the person mm -hmm. I did it for like this is what they, they got out of me doing that nothing says I'm an achieve nothing says I can get your project in on time and on budget like I'm a project manager and I was on this difficult project managing it and I got it in on time and on budget and I saved this company X amount of money. Like who's going to get an interview, you or the person that says I'm a, a pragmatic and proactive individual with like, it's a no brainer. Just I, like. I'll, I'll tell you what I did by the way. And I still, I, well, I haven't done it recently, but what I used to do when I was consulting was I, my resume was actually three parts. My CV was right. three parts. Yep. And, I, and I got these very nice, um, very heavy paper folders that resume on the top gold but when you open it up on the left, bone. It, 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 it was as my dad said people buy sizzle they don't buy steak okay? correct it was a presentation and when you open it up on the left hand side it was my resume cv okay it was hey, here's the company that i worked for and kind of what i did and what i accomplished on the right hand side there was three pieces of paper the first one was a list of skills with proficiencies next to it so you can see which which areas i was proficient in which which bottle and then behind that was actually the, some projects i'd worked on and i picked those projects based on who i was talking to at the company so it was a it was a list of 10 or 12 projects that explained how big the project was, how big the team and the project was, what my role in the project was and what the outcome was. Right. And that was and highly valuable because it allowed the people to, to see my resume, but then it also allowed a conversation piece during the, the interview. Right. It allowed them to imagine you coming into their organization and doing that for them. And then they could ask you questions about it the best indicator of future performance is past performance so show people how you've performed yep. and do that right at the top of your cv and as you said ben top skills even if it's a top five it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. a whole page if it's just the the top five things that you're awesome at and rate them like out of 10 or but, put a but, graph or but whatever. parse out the old skills like if, if you got i got fox pro you know 2.6a skills right or right i, got, I don't i I don't include AS400 on my CV anymore. Yeah, like. I'm a mainframe. I parse those things out. Of, I mean, you know, keep this thing looking fresh mm. and, and, and don't make it look like it, like you're 400 years old. Right, exactly. And like, you only really need the last few jobs. Like mm -hmm. the, if you're a contractor, maybe, a, a, you know, the last three years maybe is relevant, maybe yeah. five if you've been on a couple of really long projects. Likewise, perm the last one or two roles after that, it's, you know, it's it's dead experience. I mean, there's, there's probably stuff that's useful, but you don't have to go into great detail about it. Education, like less and less relevant these days. I think very, I cannot remember the last time uh, a client asked me for someone with a degree or something like that. Like it does happen. You can put it on there if you think it's relevant or equally leave it well, off. But it. also know who you're selling. So like, for example, I would agree with you until you sell to the U.S. government or you put something in placement for the U.S. government. For example, right. the U.S. government had, in order to get paid certain levels, you have to have a certain educational, uh, they don't care if you, your degree can be in music, music. Uh, your, your degree could be in, you know, anything, but you, you have to have, have a have certain have degree it. to get a certain level. So, so yeah. understand that audience, you're, you're, cause this is, your CV is really a sales document. You're selling your CV, you're selling yourself. Yeah, it's your brochure. Right? Yeah. How do you want people to perceive you? Perceive you? Do you want to be the pro low or do you want to be the hot mess low hun? Right? It's uh, it's up to you. Um, but like, yeah. Or likewise, I used to recruit for some of the big four in um, uh, management consulting, and they, because of the way their charging structure is with their customers, you have to have either a, a, a degree or a master's degree. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's fine. But like, I think for the most part, it doesn't doesn't feature but like include it or don't include it unless you know you specifically need to because of the target client right yep. so a quick uh, rundown of some of the don'ts that we didn't touch on again don't leave gaps gaps on the cv just allow people's imagination to run wild um like if you if you just didn't get work then just put i didn't get work or put put something or said like in between jobs i took the opportunity to do my mb 200 like whatever you know just put Put something in there right mm -hmm. just acknowledge that there is a gap don't make it 100 pages nobody nobody wants to read that nobody wants to read that like too much detail is bad like i need to i, I don't need to know every single my detail of every experience that you've ever had i don't need to know you know like every single conversation you've had with people that you work with i need to know what result you're going to deliver that's what you need to get across in the cv everybody is hired to make money or save money 
-hmm. or save time, which is essentially saving money. And you need to demonstrate how you do that for a company, how you've done that for a company and how you're going to do it for them. Like that's it really yep. realistically. Okay. Two things here. I think we're, we've talked, we touched on these here, but you know, we got about 10 minutes left or a few minutes left. So we're, we're going to, these are, I think both you and I have, have, uh, have uh, uh, a, uh, a feeling here. The worst thing in the world you can be is when there's somebody in your life who, when they call you, all they do is want something. You look on your phone, you're like, oh, <laughs> like, like, like you, you, like there's a, a, a visible, oh. and you just go, oh, your network is critical. Build a network. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like you reach out and say, hey, how are you doing? How are you surviving? Code like just a random either text message, LinkedIn message, email. It doesn't just carry your pigeon. Who cares? Just, just, I mean, you know, build that network um, and keep your network fresh and figure out who in your network you need to connect with and who do you build relationships with and, and build the relationships by directionally. So when you need something, the time that the phone rings is when you need it. So any, any comments on, on networking? Yeah, like it's just, uh, people are very shy about it. Um, and honestly, uh, I, I think we spoke about this earlier about like the it's it's kind of like the best time to plant a tree is 10 years ago the second best right. time is now right like so it, it's it's fine if you don't have much of a network but like the best way to network especially if you feel a bit shy or unsure about it is to seek out ways to be able to add value to other people if you see someone doing something and you know you can help on it then offer to help they might say yes they might say no um, but like you'll probably make a friend out of it, right? And like Ben says, then if you need something, it's much easier to pick up the phone or drop them a message and say, oh, can you help me with this, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, the, the second place I would put here is seek out mentors. And I'm gonna just start off here. Your mentor cannot be your manager and blaze it on your eyeballs, put it you know, behind your, you know, put it on your, you know, put a tattoo across your forehead if you need to, whatever you need to do, your mentor cannot be your manager. But figure out, remember, again, go back. For those of who have ADHD, go back 20 minutes and rewatch that earlier session. Um, map those, map your skills, map what you need. If you need more political information from a non technical, go find somebody who's, who you know is political. If you need to communicate better, go find a mentor who can communicate better. You become more strategic. So seek out mentors and understand that it's a bi directional street. Understand what you're giving a mentor and what you're getting from the mentor. Otherwise, it, it, it's just, it's not a, it's not a useful thing. Um, incidentally, if anybody wants to hire Ben as a mentor, he's an excellent mentor, but he's quite pricey. <laughs> I, yes, yeah, so my, my, my hourly rates are, are, are a bit excessive. Yeah. Um, but, uh... The next two slides, by the way, are going to be something a little bit unique to Microsoft that you'll hear Microsoft people talk about. And I want to breach, breach you because it is, it's actually a good exercise that I found to be even inside and outside Microsoft be very valuable. At Microsoft, they're called walking decks. You, you know, I think we talked about, you know, like what the heck's a walking deck? Um, yep. So what a walking deck is, is two or three slides that describes who you are and what you do. So, so this is my, um, don't make fun of it too badly. Um, I would never make fun uh, of it. But this is, my, this, this is my page one of my walking deck, right? So, 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 so who am I? What have I done? It's a one pager. Like this is my, I can stick this in front of you, you can understand what I do and what excites me. It's a bunch of data stuff on there. That's as much to strike up a conversation, Allison, as it is to actually do anything. Right. Okay. But more important to that though, is, is this, this to me, this, this, this page right here, which is you got to distill what you are and you got to still what you've like, again, I look at those five job posts, you know, five jobs, five people, right? Five tags. Yeah. Every one of those jobs that somebody's done has resulted back into like my very first job was a real estate appraiser. Okay. Which you would think real estate appraisal and software has nothing in common. The truth of the matter is highest and best use, net present value, best present use. Those are things that we can use in strategy and development today. Right. Um, and so I broke my thing. Here's the three things I do. I manage through change. I can incubation the mainstream, and I can maintain a customer focus. And so when somebody asks, what's your core of what you do? Have those three things that you're ready. And this is work. I'm going to tell you right now, this was a year's worth of work. 
Yeah, I was about to say, how did you get there? Like, you know, what was the <laughs> process of like distilling everything down into these? Uh, I started these again. I started gapping down. What you know? What do I really do? What, what what's what's my value to an organization? Why is somebody hot? You know, what's your value? If your value is just a, a cog in a wheel and turning a wrench, you're never gonna get you're never gonna get the the career or the or the job you really want. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chess or checkers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like the, the whole point of this is I do a session on um, planning your career in terms of like, where do you want to go? And we, we touched on it earlier with the, with the career path. Like you, you need to know where you're going. Um, you can't like, you, you, well, you can go around blindly and that's fine. But the, the odds of you getting to a certain destination that you want to get to, if you don't have a plan and you don't know what your strategic moves are, uh, is a, like a bit like just sitting down to play chess without any without knowing any strategy without knowing any of the openings any of the mid-range any of the closings right like if you were trying to play a a chess what do they call them a grandmaster or something yep. and you just thought well i was fine i'll wing it then like you're just playing into their hands right so um you need to think strategically what's when you look at the the gaps that you have in your skills both technical and non-technical what are the next moves that you can make that will help you to to build those skills that you don't have right mm -hmm. and also if you're feeling itchy uh, and like you want to make a make a move uh, into another role is it because you're running to something or is it because you're running away from something else um and again neither is right or wrong you just need to recognize what it is that's driving you forward right now because if you're if you're running away from something nine times out of ten it's actually someone uh, mm. most of the time um but just be aware of that it's a bit like emotional eating right you just need to sit down and sit with the feeling and say like actually what is it that i'm trying to do um and like I would always advocate that it's better to be moving strategically towards something that you want to get rather than running away from something, which is like going shopping at the supermarket when you're hungry and is a bad idea. Right? Yeah, I, I, I would. I think this one of my friends made this very clear to me is what, are, what am I running from or what am I running towards? So when you start your job hunt, I'm running away from something, identify what that something is, put a name on it. Put an identity on it and, and then figure out, make sure that, that that's actually, you're not just running away from a problem because that problem, if it's you, by the way, if that problem you're running away from is you, you, you found people, Allison, that are on, I know people in my network who, who, who are unhirable. Like you, you can look at their LinkedIn, you can look at their resume and they literally flip through, like what they're running away from is themselves. They haven't stopped and done that, that analysis, that inventory to say what, what so, so make sure you understand what you're running to and from. And if it's you, stop, then take you personal accountability to, and fix it. Yeah, accountability is the key there. I, like I had one guy who um, kept going into functional roles and he kept getting fired. And like nobody goes to work wanting to do a bad job, right? So like, right. you know, to assume that someone's just crap at their job is, is an incorrect assumption. There was a bad fit somewhere. And when I reference checked him, it turns out he was a fantastic developer, but he thought he had to go into a functional role to move his career forward. And I said, no, you don't have to do that. So he was trying to make himself like a square pig fitting, fitting into a round hole and it wasn't working. And then we found him a role uh, as, a, as a senior dev and that was it. And he was off and away to technical solution architect and technical director, which was, you know, where, you know, where he wanted to go to. But yeah, he just didn't understand that he didn't need to do that. To manage or not to manage. <laughs> Management is a lot like raising kids sometimes, especially your first line managers, right? It's a lot of, I get stuff from above, I get stuff from below. And, and so you can be a leader without being a manager. And so, so determine whether you're, again, do you even want to be a leader? Cause, cause that, that, that cover that, that has issues with too, but figure out if you want to be a manager or not. And, and, and if you don't, be a leader and figure out how you want to be a leader. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because I thought I wanted to be a manager because I wanted to move up. Yep. And then I started managing people and realized that not only am I terrible at it. Well, the reason I'm terrible at it is because my personality is just not suited. I cannot be the person that sits and listens to someone who's who's maybe an average performer going, I can't come into work today because my cat was sick on the carpet. Yep. Like. I should be sympathetic to that, but I'm just not. It's yep. not my personality. So not. here's a plan, by the way. This you're gonna have the PowerPoint deck afterwards. Print this out if you feel like it. 
but but really, uh, for this this is this is how I plan my path. So what do I love to do? So on the left hand side, what do I love? To, what do I know I love to do? On the right hand column, what do I hate? What like I cannot stand doing X, Y, and Z, right? And then down below, what do I think I would love to do? Right? Well, I think I would like doing this, but I haven't tried it yet. But then there's also things you know that you just you're not you're gonna suck at it before you even try it. So you're not even bother trying it. So <laughs> that's a lot of stuff for me. Yeah, well, it, 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 it's wrong. But again, you go back to that collection of of skills you have to have and how you collect those skills. This four box system here, what, what becomes readily apparent is when you put these these you fill these four boxes in. And I have lots of mentees, Allison, I've worked with. When they fill this four box system in, when they bring it back to me, their career path lights up like a like, you know like a clear path, and it's the it's the yellow brick road straight into Oz, and, and they get it yeah. immediately. I can I can see that this is like clearing the fog, right? Yes. And and giving you like some direction, like it's such a great exercise to do if you don't know which direction to go in. I even might you, do it. Even you do know what direction you're going in, do it every couple of years just to make sure that you're going in the right direction still for yeah. you. Yeah, good advice. Cool. So, so uh, just a, a brief overview of starting a job search. Most people think if they're unhappy in their role uh, or, or, or what they're doing currently, that their immediate step um, is to do the same job somewhere else. Um, actually, it might not be that. It might be that you can get a different role or work in a different department in the organization that you're in. Um, so always look at it's, it's much easier to move up and onwards internally than it is to, to move externally. Mm -hmm. um, if if a, a logical next step that supports your next chess move is not available to you internally, then that's the time to start searching externally. Um, and if you're going to search externally, start with your network. This is where uh, you know, Ben's advice on building up a network becomes really valuable. You can start reaching out to people you know and just letting them know that you might be open to opportunities and say, hey, you know what, uh, I'm, I'm in pre-sales and, uh, and I want to move into an SA role and it's not available to me where I am. Is there an opportunity for me to join you guys or your company? Or do you, if you hear about something, can you let me know? You know, just putting the word out there. Um, people will always help you. People will always help you. Everybody wants to help other people to improve, improve their circumstance, improve their life. So don't be afraid to ask. And um, and recruit. I'm not the best person to advise on vetting recruiters. I'd say because my advice is a hundred percent biased. But uh, you know, it is important that you give some thought to who you're going to be working with and who's going to be representing you in the marketplace, right? And make sure that you're going to somebody who's special. Like, like you're a salesperson, there are sales recruiters. If, if you're a generic sales, if you're a specialized salesperson, there's I, I, it, the same way you as a consultant or you know you as a pre, are, are specialized. Recruiters are specialized. Don't go to a generalist for a specialist problem. Don't go to a specialist for a generalist problem. Vet the recruiter on what they know and who they know. And 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 I also check out the recruiter's job. They they change roles every every eighteen months. That means that, mm -hmm. that they're just they're chasing a buck and that's all they care about. Or they're not very good. It, well, that, <laughs> that, that that could be, be very it too. So, all right. Because so it, it, it's easy to get hired as a recruiter, even if you're if you're yeah. average. So yeah. So, so with that, um, Allison, any, any closing words about thanking everybody for coming? I would, yeah. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Ben, for having me and, uh, and for being an awesome buddy on this uh, on this journey. I can see myself on the slide now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you on there? You must I, be on there too. I, I actually might be far left, but yeah, it, 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 uh, it, 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 yes, we would all be there. I can see Julian and everybody. Uh, right. Uh, I uh, thank you, everyone, for coming on this journey. Um, don't be afraid to reach out if you uh, if you have any questions about any of the content. Um, uh, always happy to hear from you. Anything else you want to say, Ben? Nope, just thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.